Al Fake over here at bnclive.com. Hey, it's uh, June 12th, 2017. Well, tonight we have uh, Tony D. 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 Santo coming on with us. Uh, Tony's going to talk about uh, his music career. I'm looking at his Facebook page here, and it has uh, it's quite an extensive career. Uh, Tony currently runs uh, Tony D's Music Room, and we're going to talk to him about that as well. We're also going to talk about uh, live music on Main Street. Uh, an interesting, an interesting topic we have here. Uh, about uh, live music and live musicians. Um, hang on, I think we have Tony on the line. Let me uh, see if this is Tony, and we'll we'll get right back to you. Stand by. Tony, is that you? Hang on, Tony. I got your mic on now. Is that you, Tony? Yeah, well, I can't get the show on the computer. How come? Okay, can can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you over my phone. Yeah. Okay, that's 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 fine. So, what are you trying to get on? Are you trying to get on with your computer? Yeah, I'm trying to listen to your show. Well, you're gonna. What'll happen is you'll you'll while if you're talking, this is Tony, right? Yeah. Okay. So so if you're talking, uh, you know, the, the phone is your microphone. Uh, so if you're talking, the show actually, and and you listen on the computer, you're going to hear uh, a delay. Well, I wanted- so it's good. It's going to be confusing. No, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted to record the show. I don't need to put the speakers on the computer. I just got to get it to play, and then I can turn oh. my speakers down. Okay, so you would go to uh, bnclive dot com. Uh, I believe it's slash live now. So hang on, let me check for you. I don't remember. Um, what does it say on the? Uh... <laughs> Pretty silly. I know the old my own URL. I, I post. You know, it's like driving. Down. It's like driving uh, down a street. You don't never know the name of the street, but you drive down it every day. I'm on so that you, page. Okay, so you'll you'll actually get a recording of the show because we're actually recording the show now. So you'll 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 actually get uh, you'll actually get a, a recording of the entire show. All right, so if, uh, all right, so you okay. don't really have to worry too much about that. You'll have a nice clean recording. So what's going on, Tony? How you been? Oh, I'm all right. I'm okay. How about you? You know, I, it's good. I, I, I'm always posting on your page, and I appreciate that. You allow me to post. You're always liking my posts and stuff. Uh, why don't we start a little bit? Why don't you tell us a little bit about your music career? Kind of, you know, where did it, where did it all start for you? Well, actually, I started around 15 years old, starting to take guitar lessons, and then. Uh, bumped into a cousin of mine almost a year later and who was getting a band together and we got a group together and started a group back then and uh, I've been playing ever since. And, and you, you played in numerous bands. Were main, uh, most of them just rock bands uh, and some blues bands? Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, rock bands, blues bands. I was in a, a wedding band for a, a while. Uh, uh, doing mostly top 40 stuff. Uh, some originals. Uh, the band fluctuated. Different ones, like in the seventies, I was in uh, like a disco and a rock band, and different things like that. I mean, uh, whatever was popular at the time, we were playing out. You know, mm-hmm. I was in different. And, I was in about seven or eight different groups throughout the years. And. and so did you do did you do mainly covers or did you did you, did you shuffle in some originals in that, in that uh in those bands? It was mainly covers, but we would start with some originals with some of the different groups I was in, yeah. Um never caught on doing strictly originals all night, you know. So I yeah, started that... band I started band and no, we'd go off playing and uh, I'd start a band and we'd go off playing and uh, you know Every time we play, we throw in, uh, add another original in there, trying to sneak them in there until they caught on, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be that would always be my uh, recommendation to, to 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 local cover bands. You know, a lot of times people want to come out to a bar and they want to hear what they hear on the radio, and they, they and and these folks don't know what they're missing just because they haven't heard your music. Um, you know, they think you know. 
what's on the radio is, is best for them to listen to. But there's a lot of there's a lot of original music from from these local artists that are just as good as as anything that you would hear on uh, the radio. Uh, you know the uh, you know the the main FM radio. Uh, so so I would always encourage them. Hey, you know what? Why don't you try to sneak in? If you're afraid, a lot of times the, the the bar owner doesn't want you to play originals. Did you did you did you get that from them from the from the club owners? Don't play originals. Oh, play okay. what they want to hear. Yeah. Yeah, so, this so that, area was this area was real big on covers. Uh, that was that's what you had to mainly play around here. Uh, your original stuff you actually just recorded and sent out, trying to you know get it to different contacts and stuff. You didn't you didn't get to play it, but there was like I'm not saying a hundred percent. There was a couple bands around that would get away with doing all the originals, and you know mm-hmm. some of them like hit, hit hit pretty you know pretty decent with them. But the main thing around here was covers all the time. That was always this area the way it was. Now, now you're in a you're in a, a Pennsylvania, a Pittston area, right? Uh, West is that Western Pennsylvania? No, it's uh, northeastern Pennsylvania. North, northeast, and then up by Scranton and stuff. I'm right in the middle of Scranton and Wilkesboro. Well, okay, yeah, I I know that that area pretty good because I I used to live in Rochester, New York, and. And I, and I had a position where once a week I would drive down to New Jersey, so I would take the Pennsylvania Turnpike. That would be the that would be the preferred method, especially if you were going to South Jersey from Western New York. You know, you 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 you, you go down, uh, you know, get to the Pennsylvania Turnpike, the Northeast Extension there, and you'd go through Scranton, Wilkesbury, Clark Summit, uh, and that was a uh, that was a neat that was a nice ride. That was a nice ride there. So so. Back back to the original music. So when I would when I talk I talk to bands all the time and they tell me exactly what you're telling me. That, you know, uh, you know the the club owners want us to play stuff that people hear on the radio. We want to keep the, the people up, uh, you know, interested. That's what they want to hear. So I say, well, why don't you just sneak in a cover? Don't tell them it's a cover. Just play it, and then look at the crowd's reaction. If you get a great reaction, get a great reaction to the play. You got people up dancing or really enjoying the music, then you can tell them, "Hey, you know that was one of our originals." So here we go. Now we're going to do the Rolling Stones. <laughs> yeah. So that, yeah. that would kind of That's that would kind of yeah. yeah that would kind of be my. Uh... <laughs> you can get away with originals in the bigger markets like New York with Philly and that. You, that you can probably you know get away with doing original stuff more there than the smaller markets like like in this area here. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, there's a few bands that had success with stuff. Like it's not 100, percent but I would say you know 95 percent around here is cover stuff all the time. And and then when you you know you do your cover stuff, who do you who do you model your playing after? Do you have particular artists that you that you uh, you know like to play, or, or or that you've gotten your techniques by following certain artists? Uh-huh. Mostly well, the classic rock artists I do, you know, I, you know the Stones and the the Doors and, um, and then the blues too, different blues. Uh, mm-hmm. Just a couple of covers, but um, oh my, my my number one band is the Beatles. That's that's always been with me. You know, to me they're they're the top. But uh, so we do some Beatles tunes too, but. Um, Mostly the classic rock stuff from the sixties and seventies and some fifties, you know. Mm-hmm. Now I notice you 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 play uh, guitar, um, and yes. uh, I also see you have an acoustic guitar too. So what are you, what are you doing these days? Are you playing electric? Are you playing acoustic? Uh, are you out still playing with uh, with different bands now? Uh, no, I stopped playing live uh, a little while ago for some health reasons and. I do get out once in a while when I'm up to it, and uh, I put something together, and we go out and play. Uh, sometimes I'm going to the open, I'm an open mic, and get some guys together. Once a year, I was holding a Christmas bash where I would have, I would get my whole group together, and and then we'd have a, you know, four or five local bands and have a big Christmas bash. I bet you that. I bet you I that's can't. a lot of fun. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Brings back a lot of nostalgia. You see a lot of the uh, you see a lot of the old people that came, you know the folks that came out to see in the past uh, some some fans yeah, you know yeah, from the past you, you run across you run across a few yeah sure uh, but uh, you know people now uh, my you know that are my age that followed us then 
they got families and stuff. It's hard for them to get out a lot of times. So that's why actually doing a couple times a year, I get a better reaction than if I was trying to go out there every weekend. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely, because it's a big it's a big event when you're only there a couple times a year, three four times a year. That that's an event that reminds people, oh, you know, we got to we have to go there. So if you go, you know, doing every weekend, you know, unless you, unless you travel unless you're traveling, you know, and traveling stuff. Yeah. I have different musician friends that keep pushing me. Come on, you know, they they may realize you know it's hard for me anymore to do, but. Uh, they won't let me cash it out in a hundred percent, you know. They keep me going. <laughs> yeah, they pull, they pull you, they pull you back in. They they pull you back yeah. in. They 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 miss they miss your participation. Um, so tell me, tell us a little bit about the music room. So what what is your what is your mission with the music room? So I I, I go on there a lot and post stuff, and uh, I I notice you're 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 talking about gigs and stuff. What do you, what are uh, what do you, what is your My mission? Music- it's a music room. My music room page you're talking about? The page on Facebook? Yeah, Tony D's music room. Yep, on Facebook. Well, I, I started that page mainly for local artists to be able to put their gigs on, their music, their songs, their videos, anything they want, you know, and stuff like that. And then uh, a couple of times I posted a, a few music history facts, and that seemed to catch on. So now I, I do that big. That's a big part of the page. Every night, I you know, I'll do 40, 50 music history facts on there. And uh, along with the posts from uh, different bands and stuff, and then I and I promote my own songs on there that I record. I have a home studio here that I record covers and originals, and uh, you know I'll put all the instruments in myself and do the vocals and stuff. And sometimes I'll have friends over and we'll do we'll do some songs together, and I'll post them on the page along you know on other sites also. But uh, I mainly started to try and help local musicians out. To, to put their music on and you know announce their gigs, where they're playing and stuff like that. So it's, it's a it's a about half of that and half of uh, the music history now. Do you ever do so, Facebook Live? Do you ever do Facebook Live and and do some of your your original songs on Facebook Live? I started doing that just recently, right from here from my music room. Uh, I went on Facebook Live, just me and the acoustic and. Two covers or originals, two both, you know. And it seems to go over better than when you post it on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, well, especially you if you know, have a lot of fo- especially if you have a lot of following because they now they get to see you live. You know, they get to see you yeah. live and uh uh how how often do you do that? I'd like to actually catch you one a couple of those. They they, they stay I'm up on the- they stay up on Facebook, right? Yeah, I, I post them on the music group page and on my personal page when I do a live one. And uh, I mean, they're there if you dig for them, you know. After, you mm-hmm. know so many days, it's buried. But um, I've, I've, I've done about maybe six, seven of them up so far. It's, a, it's just playing live without any equipment, just singing and playing the guitar over over through the through the iPhone, you know. So you you basically put I, the iPhone up like like you would your microphone up on a stand, right? And, yeah, and, and then basically just uh, play into it, and then not only do they hear you, but they see you. You know, I I found that 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 gives pretty decent sound. That gives pretty decent sound. It, it does. I just did one with uh, a friend of mine, Bruce Barbini. He's a bass player, and we were up here doing some stuff in my music room here. And uh, I said, "You want you want to go live on Facebook?" And he goes, "Yeah, let's do it." You know, so we. So we ended up doing Dead Flowers by the Stones, and uh, went over really well. You know, uh, I put his bass through an amp, and the phone just picked up the amp, and it picked up my acoustic without any amp, and the sound came out pretty decent. That's very cool. So I'm, I'm that's looking the at one I did. You, that's the latest one I did. You can see that you can see that one on my page, so it's still there showing. So I'm, I'm going to check that out. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think I see it here. It's uh, with. Uh, I see. I see a post here with William Green. Looks like he's playing something. I don't. I don't want to start playing it. But I'm looking at. I'm looking at the music room uh, uh, background photo there, and I see you have. It looks like you have a whole wall of, of vinyl there. Is that what that is? Uh, are those vinyl? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so all vinyl. And those those are all vinyl from the analog days. I bet right. 
Yeah, yeah. I just I also have a shelf like that full of forty fives. <laughs> oh, no kidding. There's a huge there's a huge difference in the uh, analog records uh, than the ones you go out now and buy that are digital. Uh, oh yeah. You, know, you go out you go out to and they're starting to sell thirty three thirty three and a third again LPs, and if they're not cut from the analog tapes, they sound okay. I mean, you know, I don't want to you know play them down, but they don't sound as good as the the records from the seventies and eighties that were. That was cut from, 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 from the analog. Much there's, there's a what, much warmer feel with the analog and everything uh, than the digital. Uh, digital's convenient, it's quick. And mm-hmm. stuff, but, uh, you can't be recording an analog tape. That's the way to go. We do have one studio here, Holland Sound Studios, that's completely analog. At. And, uh, that's ama- that's we, amazing. I wonder where where do they get? I wonder where they get their tape. I mean, they still they must, they must still make it. It must be expensive. Uh, that I don't know, but uh, you know he, he advertises that he's complete analog, and you know he's a friend of mine. I know him. And mm-hmm. He he runs a show too, live from Holland Studios. He puts uh, local musicians on the air to record some uh, live, and uh, I've done a, a show with him, and uh, but. Uh, his recording studio is all analog. All right, I'm looking at I'm looking at a post here on uh, Mercury Records. Vic Damone, are you a big Vic Damone fan? No, that's the music history stuff I post. Okay. I, uh, I try and post I try and post music history for all tastes. So you know everybody, you know you'll find tons of the music history. It's all kinds of you know from the '40s all the way up till now. People, you know, I just I researched it and. Uh, you know, I try to find something for everybody's tape, every genre. In that, you know, everybody isn't going to like everyone on there because it's it's all, it's all mixed. But uh, sure, absolutely. You know, I, I you know who I like. I I like Dean Martin. You like Dean Martin? Oh uh, yeah, what are you, I usually I, I love Dean Martin. <laughs> he's he's the coolest yeah. guy on the earth. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And, and his show, I was watching. I was watching uh, the CDs of his show. And I, used to, I remember watching him as a little boy, you know, with my parents. And he was, you know, you don't you don't realize how funny these cats were when you were a little boy, okay? But now you watch him and say, man, this guy was hysterical. Not only is he hysterical, yeah. he goes right in from his comedy routines to to, to crooning, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and, 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 and playing the music. And, and the guy, and he's there smoking and sliding down the banister. <laughs> that was entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> that was entertaining. Yeah, it was. And he and he was yeah, funny as all get out. Yeah, Dino is Dino is the greatest. Um, so tell me, tell me. So you grew up in the Wilkesbury Scranton area? Yes. And, and now you've been you've been a, a musician all your life. What what other what other careers have you had? I know a lot of musicians they they work day jobs. I work a day job, so there's nothing to, nothing to be ashamed of about working a day job. Did you work in the in the steel industry or the mining industry up in that area? No, no, that's there's no steel industry on this on the northeast part. The mining industry is uh, pretty much dead here now. I my last job I worked uh, for um, 23 years at, at the international airport here, the Wilkes Barre Scranton International Airport. I did maintenance and crash and rescue. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's cool, uh, like like in, the, like in the emergency services, like fire department and stuff like that, right? Yeah, and the, and the maintenance department, upkeep of the airport, you know. That sounds like a pretty uh, cool I job. Did, yeah, it was good. It was, it, was a, it, was, it was interesting. Paid the bills, right? So I'm looking That's at it. Yeah, absolutely. You got you to gotta, you gotta put the bread on the table. Uh, now, I see you, you were, you're posting your Jerry Lee Lewis. I liked him also. Um, was he one of your... I know he was chopping away on the piano most of the time. Was he one of your? Uh, uh, I don't want to call him a mentor, but did you did you do any you know modeling after his style? Uh, I know he's a pl- piano player, but singing wise. Oh, I love Jerry Lee. You know, I mean, I didn't try and copy his style, but we we do mm-hmm. we used to do hits you know, of the songs. But uh, Jerry Lee, he was you know he's one of the originals. He can't beat him. You'll, you'll see. Uh, You'll see my the music history posts are put on daily, and it's usually what happened on this day. 
in, in history. So everything I, you know, from that I posted today would be on from June twelfth and whatever year, you know. Yeah, I'm I'm, look, I'm looking down through the list here. Yeah, Bella Fitzgerald. So so um, the that that brings a lot. That must bring a lot of people. But it must bring a lot of people to your page. And, and uh, is that is that a hop? Would you would you say that's a hobby of yours? Uh, you know, uh, doing music history is that a big hobby that you have? Well, I used to like to read about all that stuff, and then uh, when I started this page, I, I ran across a couple sites that you know gave you the history for that day of different groups and different you know from different eras, and um, I posted a couple, and you know people seemed to like it, so I started doing more and more and more, and now now it's a really big part of the page. So, but, yeah, you know, like I said, like, you'll find, God, you'll, find uh, you'll find, you know, just about every type of music in there that I do. I don't just stick with one type of music. So there's something in there for everybody, you know. Yeah, I'm looking through. You got Pink Floyd, you got Aerosmith, you got Jerry Lee Lewis. Yeah, you got you got you run the whole gamut here. Today, today in music history, you even covered stuff that went on in the UK. Yeah, uh, regional Maurice Bell. Ball, regional Maurice Ball. That's pretty neat, Tony. I I, I like history. I, I I like history. That's kind of why I like interviewing artists because you get the you get to learn about them. People, you know, people that come and see local artists, they're under this misconception that you know you you go there, you somebody's setting up your gear, you come on the stage and you're all set to go, <laughs> and then 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 you just go home to your, then you just go home to your mansion, and you know then to the next show, but they don't realize that, you know, local artists are just like them. I mean, they, they have to, they don't have, uh, you know, what, what Aerosmith has, and, you know, and, and groupies and people to break down their stuff and put up their stuff. This is, not only, you know, music is a lot of fun to be on the stage, but it's hard work, you know, setting stuff up. And I'm, you know, I'm preaching to the choir, I'm sure. Um, sure. Let, let's talk, let's talk a little bit about the local music scene. So, I'm sure you talk to a lot of artists up in that area. What what do they tell you about playing out these days? And ha, and, compa- and c- kind of compare it to when you were when you were when you were you know in your earlier music career when you were doing it. So is it, has a lot changed? Uh, as far as playing out, what what you're playing out, it really hasn't changed. It's it's all still playing the popular stuff. What has changed is. Uh, attendance of people in that because I mean today you've got a lot to, to uh, take into consideration the uh, DUIs you know they weren't really strict back in when I was playing out in in the 60s and 70s like they are now uh, pricing prices I mean back back in my day you could go out with 20 bucks in your pocket all night today you know so people you know it's tough like the young younger kids. They still go. They have the money, but and, and but the, a lot of the older people, my age and that now, you know, they've got families, grandchildren, and stuff. They they can't afford to go out every weekend like that. So it, it's changed in that way. I mean, a, a lot, you know, like I said, the stricter stricter uh, drinking laws and stuff has affected a lot of stuff like that. Uh, Are there a lot as more? As- Go ahead. Are there a lot more places to play now, or less places to play? Uh, I would, I, in my opinion, I would say there's less to play now. And then you have more. Then you have more artists trying to get into those places. That's that. That's kind of I well, think what's going on too, right? The open mic jams. The open mic jams are the big thing now. You know, every place is starting to run those. You can find them all over the place anymore. Uh, there, there's good ones and there's bad ones, you know. There's, uh, we have one here uh, the, in the middle of the week uh, done at a place called Tony Wine Cellar that's hosted by Eddie Affnell and Brett, Brett Alexander and, and the owner of Wine Cellar, Victor Giuliano, that, which is caught on pretty big, and they get a lot of good musicians in there, and that goes on every Wednesday pretty much. But, and that, that, you know, that seems to go over good. A lot of places hire DJs now, too. It's cheaper. A lot of places don't want to pay full bands now, where you got to go out one, two pieces if you if you want to get any work. 
a lot has changed. Back back in my day, we could go out with six people, seven people in a band, you know, and, and, and play. If you drew the crowd in, you know, you could get the work. You got paid. Yeah. But uh, the, uh, today, the bars seem to shy away from hiring bands. I mean, there's still places hiring them, but I mean, I'm talking, you know, mostly. And they're going, they're downsizing, you know, the, the stuff to two to two pieces, singles, and then a lot of them are hiring DJs. Um, yeah. A lot of musicians yeah. are frustrated. They don't know where to go to play, so a lot of them go to the open mics. And they're playing, you know, the, you know, they're playing for free just to get heard. Yeah, the open mics are very popular, and the reason I know that is because not only you're telling me, uh, but I have, a, a, you know, a page called Talk to the Jam, and that is the most hit on page. People are constantly on talk to the jam. So what I, what what I what I try to do now is I actually try to call into these open mics and interview people, you know, while they're at the open mic, or I interview the host on the night that they have off. Uh, you know, a lot of times the host is too busy to talk, you know, while he's hosting the jam. But sometimes, you know, we can get to talk to the people that are waiting around, and people are call, uh, you know. Uh, Tuning into the archives on the on the uh, on talk to the jam. That's that's the busiest uh, the busiest page I have. So you're right. The the open the open mics and the and the and the and the jams are, are the busiest are the busiest thing. So you know, uh, plus the musician doesn't have to bring all the gear. A lot of times they provide the back line, the drums, the amplifiers, right? So you're, you're basically oh, yeah. going with your guitar. Whoever holds does, yeah. And uh, so, but most of, so the audience that goes to the open mics and open the open and the jams are those primarily musicians or, or what do you what do you think who do you think is going to that a lot of musicians right obviously and then the yeah. musicians bringing three four people some of their family members some of the people who, who are the musicians bring it to the to the to the place. Well, so you know, the, so, they're friends, like you said, they're friends, they're family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Basically, and that's what it boils down to. You know, that's that's uh, that's 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 uh, you know, a tough way. I guess they're most most of the musicians there aren't getting paid; they're just going to play, like you said, right? That's right. Yeah. Now, uh, really, the the only way these days to make money in music is really to tour. Uh, even, even the, the, the most popular bands, uh, the national acts, they have to keep touring, uh, and, and, you know, going from town to town, I would imagine that's how some of the, uh, bands, the local bands today are doing a lot of traveling, uh, to, to, you know, different, different places. It's a tough life. Yeah. It's a tough yeah. life. When, when you played regularly, did you do a lot of traveling, or did you have did you have a fixed circuit that you went on? Well, some of the groups we stayed within the. Yeah, we're, we're kind of. You know, down in the Philly area, and stuff like that. But. So we're kind we're we're kind of we're kind of losing you a little bit, Tony. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, but you're, you're breaking up. It might, it might, I guess it might be your phone. I want no, I just moved it. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so you, you, you played a lot in the Philly area, I guess, when, when you, when you were playing out more often, right? I didn't play a lot, but yeah, I played down there a few times, you know. Mm-hmm. That was it's tough, little... though, doing that trap. That tra- that tra- we had roadies and stuff then, and, you know, a band truck that they took and set up before us, and, which was good, you know. But, mm-hmm. um, That's a it, hike. It, was a, you know, it is. It is. That's a hike. And plus, you're probably working a day job on top of that, I would imagine. Yeah, well, I had to. I mean, I got married young, so, you know, I had to always make sure there was an income coming in. Well, you know, you know I've I've met very few musicians local musicians that did not have to work at day job um you know it's uh especially especially recently you know you, you know uh, you know kind of like a, a band 
where they're playing a casino, I, I would imagine you're playing a casino, you're getting a little bit more money than if you're playing in the corner bar. Uh, a lot of guys tell me that they make more money when they play these uh, these uh, festivals and stuff. Did you find that to be true when you were playing out a lot? Oh, yeah, sure. You would make much better money, sure. You know, the thing is, you, you're playing. When I was in my teens, my 20s, my 30s, even my 40s, you know, I was, you're playing, you're playing, you're playing. You think that life's never going to stop. You don't think that you're going to get old and not be able to do it. And now people that did it and didn't work any kind of day job, you know, they're at, when they get to a point now where they can't do it as much or they can't do it at all, they have nothing. You know, yeah. Thing. Uh, that's, so, but you don't think about that when you're younger. You think like, I'm always going to do this, you know, I'm always going to have the income. You just you don't think about uh, what's come, what's up the road ahead of you, you know. Exactly. I, you always... I, mean, I was working. The, I, I was working a day job because you know I had a house and a family and that, and 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 so I kept at it. But in my mind, I never thought about. I'm never going to. I'm not never going to stop playing, or I'm going to be too old to play, or things are going to change that you can't even make a decent decent buck out of it anymore. You didn't think of that stuff, you know. Exactly. Plus the fact that, you know, you're working 40, 45 hours a week on a, on a strenuous job, you know, now, now you're driving, you're setting stuff up, you're playing, you're out until one o'clock in the morning. That stuff, uh, it, it makes you tired. I mean, there's no doubt about it. It makes you tired. Um, there was times I'd, I'd be playing, in, I'd be playing in Jersey and that for like two, three times, days in a row during the week. And, and I would have to drive back and forth to go to work. And I'd, I'd, just drive in, go to work, leave, go back down to play, and then three after three days of that, you just came home and you crashed. You know, when yeah, you get exactly. You, crash, you know, exactly. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, I, I uh, you know, I work, I, I work now, and and, and I work, uh, I, I work road service. Uh, I work that fifty six hours a week, and you know, I do okay with that, and and and, and I like helping people, and I do, I do this show. Uh, two three times a week, and I gotta tell you, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted because, yeah. you know. And then uh, in between doing the shows, in between doing the shows, I have hundreds of archives that that I need to to be going through and getting them up, and so so I can get that all the other shows that I've done in the past, get them up on you know up on in the cloud there, so people can listen to them, and uh, you know work in the web pages and. And you know, going to do this and they're going to do that and doing posting, <laughs> getting people to listen to the show. <laughs> so you know, it's, uh, I can I can understand, uh, and I'm I'm doing this from my home studio, and I can imagine traveling out. You know, folks say to me, "Why well, come on out to the open mic? Uh, you know, do the show from the open mic." I, say, Shh. I wish I had the energy. <laughs> I wish I had the energy. <laughs> I know. I know it's crazy anymore. Yeah, I wish I had the energy. But uh, yeah, so so I love your page, man, and, and I really appreciate you allowing me to do posts and stuff a few times a week. I really, really appreciate that. Um, do you? That's what it's there for, Al. Thank you so much, and, and and please please feel free to post on on my pages as well. I've got a couple of pages there that you can post on uh, that you're a member of, a couple of groups, and you're more than welcome to post on there. Um, the, the, uh, I was going to, I forgot what I was going to ask you. Um, uh, the, so, so let's see here. Um, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of running out of things to talk to you about. I'm looking down through this page here and, uh, you know, I, I just love, I just love what you're doing with this page. Uh, I, I like the fact that you're doing this history. And a lot of a lot of these bands here and the and these musicians. You got Sadboy Brown there. Uh I am just uh, Oh, they're one of my favorites too. Yeah, yeah. And that 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 takes some doing to get all that, that history up there. Um do you post do you post on other groups to get people to come and see your group? Do you do a lot of do you uh, do a lot of other posting? Uh, there's another there's another there's a a, a group page called uh, Goldies and Oldies or something like that that 
uh, requested that I do my music history on there. So I nice. actually post all that history on both pages, mine and theirs. And I get a lot of reaction from there because they have a very big um, membership members. Uh, they have a lot, a real lot, the thousands. And, uh, um, and then once, I'll, once in a while I get in the mood, I'll advertise the page on other group pages, you know, for people to come on mm-hmm. over and check it out. And, but, you know, I don't, I don't do that often. I figure people will find it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, do you do you do anything else with your own website uh, at all, or you you just basically do Facebook? I just uh, I just do Facebook. I do YouTube, and I'm on a couple other ones. Ourstage dot com and SoundCloud. Um, I put my music on that stuff too on those pages, and that's about mm-hmm. it. And then on Facebook, I have a Revolver page from my when I had my band Revolver. It's called Tony D Solo and with Revolver on Facebook. And, Is that uh, you did a lot of Beatles with that band? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, we didn't do a real lot. It, 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 we did the, the name that wasn't a Beatles tribute band. It was uh, we did Beatles songs because we we liked to do them and they were popular. But we did a lot of classic rock. We've all we did uh, besides gotcha. The Beatles. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, all right, Tony. So uh, why don't you give the folks uh, the name of your pages that you're going? Actually, you got somebody calling in here. Want, let's let's get them on the line here. Let's see who this is. Hang on okay. a second. All right. Hey, hey, how you doing? This is Al Fink. Right. You're on you're on the line here with uh, Tony D. Who's this? Hi, my name is Bruce Barbini. I was uh, I'm a musician. Uh, I write. Uh, I met Tony about six years ago um, via Facebook, and you know, obviously, everybody had heard of him. Uh, you know, in the northeastern Pennsylvania, and um, we became fast friends. And I'll tell you what, he turned me on to a lot of music and made me. I'm a, was a bass player, but. Again, I was more into the, like, uh, Metallica, the uh, Iron Maiden, the uh, Megadeth music, you know. And after getting to know Tony and the music that he started turning me on to, like, I never, I never, um, like, I never uh, got do, do into uh, Do me a Polka favor, lower, or, lower, lower your computer, right? I, These were kind of, kind of I'm, hearing that. I'm turning part. it up. Yeah, I'm, I, it's, it's turned up or lowered okay, down. thank you. But, uh you know, he was generous enough to show, like, to turn us on, turn me on bands like Poco, Poco Harem, The Stones, and especially The Beatles, because I, you know, I'm a couple years uh, younger, not much, uh, but a couple years, a, a generation. You know, he was 60s, 70s, I was late 70s, 80s, uh, and just by, you know, again being so generous, uh, he would show me. Uh, the music and I would listen to the bass lines and these musicians from the 60s and 70s where Tony came from were so knowledgeable and knew their instruments so well that after I started learning and started you know, again he was generous enough to let me play and we recorded together uh, some videos which are all on YouTube on his um, on his site I actually became in my 50s a better bass player because of the music that he liked. And you, you know, I had to start studying music theory again and because, and it made me a better bass player that, than I was before. So I got, and he, again, he's very, very generous, uh, great guy. And I'm not, you know, saying that it's, it's, it's the truth. And he's uh, a very well liked and has a great reputation around here. And, uh, I, I, you know, I, I get I get that I get that feeling by looking at his pages and some of the comments that are on his pages and some of the things that he does. It's very nice of you to very nice of you to call and tell us that. So it's always great to hear that. Yeah. I, well, I'll tell you what. Like, and I'm not I'm I'm one of maybe God knows how many that he's really helped. Uh, so you know, it's just not me. And uh, till this day, uh, we you know. We're still uh, playing, and it, it, this here I am in my 50s, and I'm having the time of my life learning all this new material. And, uh, again, it just made me a better bass player. And, you know, 
it, it, again, it's just not me. And it, again, it, it's his generosity of being able. He like he'll tell, he'll teach. He doesn't hold back. He's not uh, uh, like uh, you know. In any PA, we have sort of sometimes the musicians butt heads. It's not like when I was out in California where they help each other. Tony's willing, more than willing, to help show and teach. And, uh, you know, not only is he a very good friend, but he's a terrific musician. And I have an absolute blast playing with him. Totally changed my whole outlook on music. And, and uh, I've been playing for 35 years. That's fantastic. Where do I send are you, are you... check, Ruth? <laughs> okay, how much money do I get for saying that? <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm dead serious. And again, there, like I said, I'm one of of, of many, many uh, musicians that, well, you could just look, if you go and look at his videos, you'll see all the people that he's played with, well, that he was generous enough to share his music room with and make videos with. So, uh, again... And it, it, it's just, you know, it, it's really a blast. And uh, I, I absolutely love playing with them. I really do. And I'm recording a new album as we speak, a, my first solo album. And a lot of it is uh, because is influenced, believe it or not, by the music that Tony has turned me on to. Like my first album that I, I uh, co-wrote with another uh, group, was a metal power chord album that, you know, went over good, the type of music that I, like, I grew up with Alice Cooper, Kiss, and I missed the, the Beatles era and, the again, the Poco and the Proco Harem and the Kinks and the Stones, and it's just this generosity that said, would, and, again, learning these bass lines, because these musicians, like Tony, really knew their instruments. There's a big difference from the musicians today that will pick up a, a bass or a guitar and in three months, uh, because of the way they looked, that they could be superstars. Now, back when, you, when you're learning a song by the Stones, a Bill Wyman bass line or uh, a Gary Thane bass line from Uriah Heep, you better know what you're doing and you better be a player. And Tony is one heck of a player. And writer, wow. by the way. And a better friend, to be completely honest with you. And that's so, it. That's amazing. Hey, Tony, I see a piano in the background. Do you also play the piano? Well, I don't play it out uh, live. I, uh, I use it when I'm recording, you know, songs and putting all the instruments in, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I know a lot of musicians, they actually uh, compose the songs on the piano. Is, is, that, kind of what you, uh, is that kind of what you do with it? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I, okay. I, I, I've written a couple songs that I, I did on the piano. I do it mostly with guitar, but, uh, you know, I use it to put on, you know, mix in with all the instruments in on the songs mostly. I, I teach myself it more than anything. I don't call myself a keyboard player, but I try, I try and learn how to do what I need to do. You know what I mean? I got you. Now, now sir, sir, the, the gentleman that called in, tell us your name again. I'm sorry. I, I didn't quite get it in the beginning. It was Bruce Barbini. Okay, yeah, Tony was talking and, about you earlier in the show. Yeah, I, it, it's funny. I had a little, I had a hard, a little bit of a hard time getting on. I was going, uh, was getting a little anxious trying to get on here. I started at about, uh, I don't know, quarter to eight, but I finally got in, and I'm glad I did because, like I said, uh, very good friend. And by the way, one thing he didn't mention because. You know, he's not the type of to, one the type to go around bragging. His production value is amazing. I mean, in his studio, some the songs sound like they were recorded at SRI uh, Studios in New York. He's a terrific, terrific producer. He just has a knack for knowing when a keyboard should be in or when a violin should be in, and his harmonies. Uh, you know, he has a terrific uh, vocal range, too. That's another thing that, uh, you know, he he could uh, soprano, baritone, tenor, you name it, and he could sing it. And he's been doing it his whole life. Like I said, uh, in the six years, you know, I've been, I, I consider myself very fortunate. And that, that, you know, 
and I mean that sincerely. I really do. And, and you, he makes and you a lot Tony of his videos, too. Did you meet Tony through we, Facebook or, or, or in yeah, a, gig, we met, a gig? Well, I, I knew of him. Obviously, and but we talked. We start. We just started talking, and I was. Uh, I caught a couple of his videos on Reverb Nation on uh, his Facebook, and we started what was called a musicians' luncheon back in uh, 2011, where a bunch of us that didn't know each other from Adam musicians that would meet in uh, NEPA musicians a, a website, and we started talking and finally we started having these musician luncheons once a month to where it got up to about 14 to 16 people and it started with three George Ermitty, Tony and myself and people you know more, the more musicians got they got more interested we took tours of the Martin uh, Guitar Factory which is only about a 45 minute ride from where we live um, and again we all you know we, we just start sharing parts of you know our musical knowledge and uh did, did, did like bands i said form, did bands form from that alliance there well i'll tell you what that's a very good question we we put together like with tony he's got about right now he's got about six bands going <laughs> because you know a lot of people want to play with them me included and we uh -huh. right now the last uh, show we did uh we were called the brats we took all our first names and put it uh, put it together, and it's spelled Bratz, and we uh, did an open mic, and I got to tell you, the talent, uh, like a Brett Alexander from uh, the the band, the Badleys, I, I don't know if you've heard of them, they had a big hit back, I think, in Tony, what was it, the 90s? That yeah. They had the Angelinas coming home and falling, and uh, they were signed by so Sony at one time, but, I mean, it's amazing the, the talent at these open mics it really is it's the best of the best you cannot go up there if you're a ham and egger because you know <laughs> it'll show but uh i like, I like you know, a ham and egger <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well, that's what we call them <laughs> but anyway uh I, I wanted to call in because uh you know just of, of what you know how he's helped me and uh, you know again he's a very good friend uh, more than anything else. And, Tony, I love you, brother, and I'll see you soon, okay? Bruce, I appreciate you calling in. That was really nice. Hey. Thank you. No problem. Al. And, Al, yes. be good, Al, okay, buddy? Right, th thank you, Bruce. Thanks for you calling in. Thanks for listening. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take care, Bruce. All right. Thank you, Bruce. All Take right. care, T. Al, you're going to have right. to kick in on this pack for me. This is going to be a big one. That's uh, I'll tell you, it's nice. It's nice to have friends like that, man. Uh, you, you, oh, it's, yeah. It, yeah, that that is that is fantastic. That is fantastic. Uh, it only it only Ready? goes to show. It only goes to show how, uh, you know, the time that you put into your music has paid off not only, uh, you know, for your for yourself, uh, but not only uh, playing, but but allowing people to learn how to play and what to play and. Uh, it's just it's just a great sharing experience. And then we were talking about we were talking about the open mics, and ha and how they're incubators. Yeah. And uh, that's the most popular that's the most popular uh, page that I have. The open mics. People uh, just want to go to open mics, and that's the place to go. So Tony, it's been fantastic. I, I I've been meaning to get you on the show for quite some time. I've been following your page, and posting on your page for the better part of two and a half years. And I really appreciate it. I appreciate you having me on, Al. Uh, no problem. Uh, I need without guys like yourself, we wouldn't have a show. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we have Tony D from Tony D's Music Room. Check it out on Facebook. Check out his uh, his uh, Google uh, YouTube sites. Right, you have YouTube sites, and uh, look look them up. Uh, maybe he can teach you something. All right, Tony, we want to wish you a good evening. want you to stay well. Uh, how is it up there today? Pretty hot, I bet, right? Yeah. Like 90. Time I got it was, in the pool today. It was like 90 down. It was like 90 down here. By the, I was over by the beach this afternoon, this late this morning, very early afternoon. It was really nice. It was a, it was a nice ocean breeze, but as you get further inland, I bet you it was a lot hotter. 
Well, it's, it's yeah, summertime. We, summertime is here. Beats, beats that damn we winter. We get lots of winter. We Absolutely. get lots of winter. We get much summer. So I, I, you know, I take all that once again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, Tony. So tomorrow I'll shoot the uh, I'll shoot the archive over to Tony D's music room, and you have it forever. You can post you can post it up and post links to it, and it'll be a forever archive. Okay. I appreciate that. Al. Thank you. All right. Thanks for coming on with us. Be well. Take care. Keep making Take great care. music. And let's do this again. Absolutely. Absolutely, Tony. All right, this is Al Fink here at BNC Live. We we thank Tony D. Tony Tony is a great musician, great mentor, great teacher. Uh, you heard it from Bruce Barbini. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of other people that were listening that knows Tony. And, uh, hey, without guys like Tony, we wouldn't have a show. Uh, get out there and listen and see some local musicians perform. Uh, you don't know what you're missing if you're – not listening to them and, and a lot of their original music. I know you like the covers, but uh, the original music uh, from these guys is just as good. These guys and girls, just as good. And uh, they need you to come out, buy their CDs, listen to their music. Don't drink and drive. If you're going to drink, get a designated driver. Get out there to these shows. This is Al Fink. Uh, we might be back tomorrow night with another live show, but I've been getting digging into the archives. I think over the last couple of days, I posted up six of them. Got a, we got a new uh, a new uh, site coming up called localmusiconmainstreet.com. Okay, we're working on that now. We're going to build the show around local music and local musicians. Uh, our show has always been around local music and local musicians. I'm just trying to come up with different ways to interest people to getting out to see local music on Main Street. All right, this is Al Fink over here at bnclive.com. Be safe. Get out there. We love you all. Thanks. Come on back. Uh, keep checking the website, bnclive.com. You'll see a lot of different updates on there. And also talk to the jam com. Up and running right now. Okay. Good night, Tony. Good night, everybody. Al Fink, bnclive.com. Hello.